Today we're going to have a look at a couple of products. The first one's going to be this expandable, collapsible 350 milliliter coffee mug, and also this power port plug and play flashlight. Fully expanded, the mug is about four and a half inches tall, and once it's collapsed, we get just under three and a quarter. As a space saver, that definitely helps, but I feel like I've seen a few others that would squish down even further. I got both of these items from an Amazon seller named Xerix? I think that's right. If not, I apologize. I saw a couple of things on there that were interesting to me. Number one is this magnetic rotary switch. I thought that was a good feature, and also right here I see it's powered by a single 16340 battery, so that's right up my alley. Unboxing, I have to say, it feels pretty good. Construction's every bit as good as most of the lower end lights. The finish seems to cover all of it. Head's not wobbly. The light's a single mode, so the rotary switch on the head is just for on and off, but you can go either direction with it. All the way to the right is off and all the way to the left is off, and in the center of those clicks is your on position. Even though the rotary dial doesn't provide any brightness adjustment, I still like it. It's really simple, easy to use. You can find it in the dark. Anybody can operate it. And what I like best about it is that there's no extra stuff. There's not SOS or strobe in the mix right there. Down the barrel, I can see that we have a two-part reflector. The top is smooth and the bottom has an orange peel. It is a plastic reflector. The XPG Generation 2 emitter is perfectly centered. The lens isn't AR coated, but it is clear and smudge free, so that's nice. Opening the tail cap, which is also the charger, I see we have pretty good threads. They're decently smooth, not too gritty, not overly thin. I also see our 16340 battery, which honestly I'm a little disappointed. It's a proprietary battery. Having the PCB on both ends like that is basically just for the charging system to work so that they can get both negative and positive power at the tail end. I, I'm not a big fan of that type of battery. I prefer to be able to use my own, but not a deal breaker. I thought I would do a comparison between this silicone mug and a traditional ceramic type mug, so I found one that I had a lid for. The first test that I wanted to do was just to see how well they would hold water, basically how well the lids worked. Even turning this silicone one upside down, I couldn't get a single drop of water out of it. The seal on it was great. The ceramic mug didn't do so well, but it could just be because I have a lame lid for it. Next, I boiled some water and checked the temperature of the water and poured one cup of the water into each mug. Already the ceramic mug is at a disadvantage. I set a stopwatch and popped them both in the freezer. While we wait, we'll go try out the charging system on our flashlight. It seems to go in the power port just fine, but it doesn't really stay plugged in. The spring pushes it back out. I can kind of get it to stay if I mess with it, but going down the road, I don't think it would work, so I decided to improvise a little bit. Now we're set. A short while later, I came back and we had a green light. I did test the output of this flashlight and hear the factory claims versus what I got. It's time to check on our mugs. After 52 minutes in the freezer, I checked the temperature on each. I got 52 for the ceramic mug and 71 on the silicone for a difference of 19 degrees. The beam of the Xerix is super good. It's a real tight hot spot with bright spill and it's smooth. Both the hot spot and the spill are soft. This is my U-Torch UT-01 flashlight with a similar output. Here's the Xerix.
As always, let us know what you think in the comments section. For more videos like this, be sure to subscribe. Thanks for watching. Good luck. Thank you.